Thank you. Uh, I would like to, uh, um, uh, to invite our next uh, speaker, Professor uh, uh, Benny Pinkas. Uh, Benny is uh, an associate professor at uh, Bar Ilan University. He has uh, previously worked in uh, the research labs of uh, Intertrust Technologies, uh, Hewlett Packard, the HP, and the Google. He received a starting grant from uh, the ERC as well as grants from uh, the Israel uh, Science Foundation, and he is a PI in two uh, European uh, research consortiums. Benny, please. Great. Thanks. Hi, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm going to talk today about a specific problem which we've been investigating uh, in the recent years. Uh, I'll describe the problem, some uh, uh, motivation why it might be relevant in different domains, and about the approaches we use for solving it. So the problem is a uh, private set intersection. We have two parties. We love to call them Alice and Bob. Okay. Each one of them has a, a private set of items. Alice has x1 up to xn, and Bob has y1 up to yn. And suppose that Alice wants to learn the intersection of the two sets and nothing more. So Alice learns just the intersection. In this case, Bob learns nothing. And we can think about other variants where both parties learn the outputs, or perhaps they only learn the size of the outputs, or some other function of the outputs. Okay? And why is this problem interesting? So actually, it's relevant in many, many domains. So for instance, uh, for information sharing, suppose these two parties are companies that have some threat data that they, that they received, and they want to check if you know, the same threat applies to both of them. They received pings from the same addresses or something of that sort. So each one of them has a huge list, and they want to compare the uh, intersection of the list. And it could be any other type of information that they uh, want to share. Uh, another uh, uh, application is for matching. So they have a set of properties. They want to see if they match or not. So like a you know, cute application, say, for dating, you know, each person has a set of properties, and they match if you know, the intersection of the sets is larger than some, uh, some threshold. Okay? Uh, so that's another application. Perhaps uh, you know, all kinds of genomics applications are all, also relevant. Uh, another application where this is actually used in practice is for identifying contacts. So some apps that we download you know, for, to our cell phones, uh, they want to know our uh, contact list in order to find uh, some of our, all of our contacts who are already members or users of that app, say, to provide us uh, targeted uh, content or other services. Uh, so those apps which care about our privacy, and there are some like that, are not interested in uh, learning the entire set of contacts just those in our phone that are already available, uh, exist in their databases. So essentially, they want to compute the intersection of our, data, our, our set of contacts with their database. And some are actually using protocols for private set intersection. However, they're using an insecure protocol that I'll describe soon. Another uh, app, which is uh, harder to explain, but actually I think it has the you know, uh, largest potential for uh, commercial, uh, you know, for commercial re revenue, is for computing ad conversion rates. So big advertising companies like Facebook and Google, they show us ads, and they want to measure how many people who saw the ads actually purchased things. They call this, uh, uh, so basically it's a conversion rate, how many ad, uh, 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 ads were converted to actual revenue. So they have this set of people who, you know, the advertiser has the set of people who saw the ad. The, uh, 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 the shop has, no, or whatever, the person who put the ad has the set of people who actually purchased the ad, and suppose they have the same, uh, who actually purchased something as a result of seeing the ad. And they want to compute the intersection of the two in order to compute all kinds of measurements on how efficient the ad is. And actually, Facebook is doing something like that using the same insecure protocol that uh, the uh, apps above are using. I'll describe it in a minute. And this is a multi-billion uh, uh, industry. It's very important for these companies to know how effective the ads are, because then they can charge more for the ads. So here's a naive PSI protocol. I should have used uh, 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 animation here to hide the lower bullet. So just look at the high, higher, higher bullet. So when I, when I describe this uh, problem to people, they usually come up with the following solution. So they say, let's the parties have uh, use a one-way function, a hash, one-way hash function, say h. Then Bob computes the hash of its, of its input, h of y1 up to yn. 
And he sends it to Alice, and then Alice computes the hash of her inputs and just compares the two, uh, two sets. If the same input is, no, is, is available both in Alice's Bob and Bob's set, then the hashes will, will be the same, and uh, Alice will identify the intersection. And since age is a one-way function, okay, if uh, Alice gets age of y1, she won't be able to reverse age and get to uh, the actual input, you know, y1. So this seems secure. The problem here is that the uh, inputs usually come from a small domain. If the input is an IP address, there are only two to the 32 options for the IP address. If it's a name, there are very few options. So it's very easy for the parties to do an exhaustive search of all possible inputs, apply age to them, and see what the, you know, what, what the matches are. So Alice, say if the values are IP addresses, she compute age of every possible IP addresses, not in IPv6, but you know, yeah. And then uh, she'll you know, have a list. Bob sends her age of oh, his inputs. She compares it to the list and knows what uh, Bob's inputs were. Okay? So this is insecure, but actually what Facebook's, Facebook is using, according to the press, and what uh, the app uh, uh, companies are using uh, is exactly this protocol. So we were looking to design a more, uh, you know, more secure protocol. So uh, we were not the first. This is a protocol you know, up from 1986 doing this. It's based on Diffie, Hellman, Key Exchange. I won't go over the details. Uh, there are a few uh, issues that are well, uh, interesting. First, they only do, you see, like one exponentiation or two exponentiations per item. So it's rather efficient. Okay? The overhead is linear. They're doing an exponentiation per item. You can do a few thousands of these per second. Uh, another issue is that this is a very simple protocol. I can describe it in like two or three minutes, okay, and then implementing it, if you have the right library, it will take you like half a day. So it's very simple to implement, okay? Uh, it's pretty efficient. Uh, however, the throughput of doing exponentiation is something like 10,000 per, per second or so, and we would like to be much more efficient than that, okay? So this is a pretty good solution if you just want to implement something uh, quickly, but if you want to have a good throughput, you have to do, to do better. Now, the uh, next you know, you know, solution we might look into is uh, generic protocols for secure two-party computation. So secure two-party computation uh, is I don't know, a name for a set of methods for computing functions between, between two parties so that each one of them has an input at the end to compute the output and learn nothing more about their inputs, okay? So the generic, the, Example is the millionaire's problem. Alice has a value x, Bob has a value y. Uh, they're both millionaires. They want to know which one of them has more money. X is how many uh, Alice has, y is how much money Bob has. And they want to com uh, compute just whether x is greater than y or y is greater than x and nothing else, reveal nothing else, okay? So there are very known, uh, you know, very you know, well-known solutions for that problem, okay? And we can apply them for computing the set intersection. So this solutions to the uh, to uh, secure multi computation multi party computation can be used for computing any, any any function not just comparing two numbers in particular they can be used for comparing uh, the intersection of two sets so that's that's very good uh, the caveat is these solutions are based on taking the function we want to compute and expressing it as a boolean circuit so boolean circuit go back to your i guess first year in uh, in college Remember, you know, circuits using uh, you know, Boolean gates and not and so on. So you take what function you want to compute and express it using Boolean circuits. So that's actually not, not bad. Today we can uh, compute circuits of even billions of gates pretty efficiently, okay? Uh, but the question is, you know, how, small, how small or large the circuit for computing intersection should be? So how efficient are Boolean circuits? So it's easy to see that if we take the computation and represent it as a, as a Turing machine that runs in time t and you know, memory m, then the circuit will be of size order of t time, times n. And if you think more carefully, then it's actually t times log t. But you know, how much is it in, in practice? So for many tasks, the uh, size of the circuit is linear in the inputs, say for adding two uh, values or comparing two values. But we are interested in the task of taking two sets and computing the intersection. So the naive circuit for computing the intersection will have to do n square comparisons because each item of Alice might be equal to each item of Bob. And n square comparisons, if you're talking here, say uh, a million items per, uh, 
per player, and each item is, say, 32 bits long, it's going to be a pretty big circuit, okay? And we would like to do better. And there's actually a better, uh, better, uh, better circuit, and it's based on uh, old technology of sorting network networks. So this technology was developed in the 60s uh, for uh, telephone networks, where they had switches that could only compare two numbers, and they had to sort you know, very large sets of numbers using these switches, where each switch could compare just two numbers. And the nice result is if you take two sorted lists, each one of them of length n, and you have these switches, and you want to sort the union of the two lists, you can do this using n times log n uh, 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 comparisons. So basically, a circuit for sorting uh, n uh, items would take something like n times log n gates, which is much less than n squared. So how can we use this to uh, compute the intersection? What the parties should do, they should build the following circuit. It gets the inputs of Alice and Bob. Okay? It uses the sorting network to sort the union of the two, uh, two sets. This circuit will take n log n gates. Once we have the union sorted, then if the same item appeared both in Alice's list and in Bob's list, then in the sorted list, the two occasions are going to be right next to each other. So then we just have to go through the list and compare adjacent items. And this circuit will need to do n comparisons. And in addition, we have to shuffle the results at the end for privacy. I won't tell you why, but it takes another n log n uh, 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 comparisons. Uh, so the total is something like n log n uh, comparisons. Each one of them takes l gates where L is the length of the items. So this is actually manage manageable circuits even for uh, uh, sets of size billion. Okay, and we have different improvements on that. Okay, and the last protocol that we use is based on primitive that we call oblivious transfer. So oblivious transfer is the, the basis for uh, secure computation. It was shown that all secure computation can be done using oblivious transfer, and it's a very simple pro uh, primitive. Uh, one party, the sender, has two inputs. The other party has one bit as an input. As the result, the second party, the, the receiver, should learn the input of the first party that corresponds to his bit. So the first party has x0 and x1. The second party has a bit b. And the output of the second party should be xb, and nothing about the other input of the first party. And the first party should learn nothing about the output of the second party. It should learn nothing about whether the second party preferred to learn x0 and x1. So this seems like a very you know, artificial or simple problem. But apparently, using that uh, primitive, uh, we can uh, do secure computation, in particular, secure set intersection. And the nice thing is that there was a lot of work on imp improving the performance of implementing this primitive. So we can use all of that to achieve an efficient set intersection protocol. So uh, in particular, oblivious transfer should use public key operations. Okay? And public key operations are costly. You can, say, can do, say, 1,000 or 10,000 per minute. But using OT extension, we can uh, do a small number of public key operations and then do the rest using uh, uh, symmetric key operations like AES. And we can get to a super to like a million per second. And using oblivious transfer, we can actually, and I'll skip that, do a uh, set intersection very you know, efficiently. But then we can do even better. Another thing that we can see is that, you know, suppose Alice and Bob have this item. And suppose we take a hash function, and we use it to map items to bins. Okay? So Alice has n items. Suppose she sets n bins. And she uses a hash function h that takes an item, computes its hash, and this decides the bin to which this item is going uh, to which it's going to put this item. Now, if Alice and Bob have the same item, then both of them are going to map it to the same bin. Okay? So if we compare Alice's items to Bob's items, they can first independently map their items to bins. And then they should only compare the items that Alice mapped to the first bin to the items that Bob mapped to the first bin, the Alice items that Alice mapped to the second bin to those that Bob mapped to the second bin, and so on. So we get to much smaller, more, more problems, but much smaller ones. Okay? So this can improve uh, performance. The caveat here, again, is that uh, they must hide how many items were mapped to each bin. And this requires other techniques. 
And I won't go into these techniques. It actually requires uh, a lot of tweaks regarding uh, hashing and probability analysis. We use cuckoo hashing and different variants. And let me just get to uh, some performance results at the end. So say these are results for comparing a million, uh, uh, for computing the intersection of sets of a million items. So the naive insecure protocol, the one that uses a one-way function, uh, on the LAN takes something like 700 milliseconds, and on a, uh, uh, you know, between uh, on Amazon's cloud between uh, Virginia and uh, Germany it takes like three and a half seconds. But this is insecure. Okay, the previous protocol, the one that uses uh, public key Diffie-Hellman crypto, okay, that was used to be the state of the art took about three orders of magnitude more, okay? And then the new uh, solutions, so our best oblivious transfer-based protocol takes about, I guess, it's about 200 times faster than the uh, previous protocol because we just re reduced everything to oblivious transfer. We have very efficient protocols for implementing it, and we just did it you know, you know, as, as fast as possible, okay? So it's, it's, it's pretty impressive. Uh, the best circuit-based protocol that is based on generic circuits uh, is uh, no, more, uh, uh, much slower than our protocol, but, more, but still more efficient the, uh, than the protocols that we had two or three years ago based on diffie hellman uh, uh, key, uh, uh, key exchange. However, there's one benefit of using the circuit-based protocols compared to the protocols using, uh, you know, to compare to our best protocol. So our best protocol, the one that runs in four and a half seconds, the specific protocol for this, you know, computing the intersection. Now suppose someone comes to me and says, you know, I don't want to compute the intersection, I want to output one if the size of the intersection is greater than 100 and output zero otherwise, or any other variant of the basic uh, problem. Then in this case, I have to go back to this OT-based protocol and design it from scratch. We'll have to uh, hire a, a cryptographer to do that. Whereas the last uh, uh, protocol is based on running a circuit. So basically, you'll have to take you know, a second year student, tell him, you know, this is a circuit for computing the intersection. Please take that circuit, change it for computing you know, one if the, size of, if the size of the intersection is greater than 100. And then you'll be able to run this protocol at the same, uh, at the same uh, 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 performance, more or less. So using generic solutions is much more you know, generic and flexible than using specific solutions. However, so specific solutions can be much more efficient. And that's the end for now.